In this tutorial, we have two instances of FlowWise running on the same machine. One on port 3000 with an SQLite database and one on port 3001 with a MariaDB database. In these databases, we see all of the user messages and the API messages and can create views, filter and export the data. When we use the FlowWise chat box, the user prompt and the answer from the LLM are stored in the database. For more information, navigate to the Flowwise docs and to the database section. Flowwise supports SQLite, MySQL or MariaDB and PostgreSQL using type ORM. In this tutorial, we use the default SQLite database and MariaDB. MariaDB is similar to MySQL, but not the same. To use MariaDB directly with FlowWise, you need to do some adjustments and change the collation. Watch till the end of this tutorial to be able to use FlowWise with the MariaDB included and shipped with XAMPP. There are many database tools. Here we use the free portable version of Heidi SQL but feel free to choose your favorite database tool. When we open Heidi SQL for the first time, we have to create a new session or database connection. First, we want to set up the SQLite session. We name the session flowwise underscore SQLite and choose SQLite from the dropdown of supported databases. Next, we select the database file which is located in the root folder of the current user in the .flowwise folder with the name database.sqlite. We save the configuration and open the session. Let's explore the stored data by FlowWise in the database. First, we have chat underscore flow table, where we can see the name of our chat flows and some UI configurations. Then we have chat underscore message table where we can see the role of the message and the content. Then we have the credential and migration table and finally the tool table. Here we see the name of the tool, the description and the schema and even the defined JavaScript function. If our needed information is stored on multiple tables, we can easily create a view and join the tables. For example, if we want to see the name of the chat flow beside the message role and content, we can easily create a view. We name it view underscore chat underscore flow underscore message and start creating with a symbol select statement. Then we choose CF as alias for the chat underscore flow table and select only the name field from CF. Next, we join CF with chat underscore message alias CM and choose the role field and the content field from the CM and save the view. When we go to the data tab, we see the information the way we want it to have. If you want, you can set a filter on the view. For example, to show all of the messages containing the word alarm. After the data is filtered, we can select the rows and if we like, export them as a CSV file to the desktop and open it later using Excel to analyze the data further. To have a better understanding of the data stored in the database, you can start FlowWise and see the configuration in the FlowWise UI. In the UI, you can find the four chat flows stored in the chat underscore flow table in the database. Some of them have custom tools and you can see all of them in the tools menu. The information of the tools shown in the UI comes from the tool table. SQLite is the default database, but you can use other databases like MySQL or MariaDB or PostgreSQL. XAMPP in the past had MySQL as the database, but in the recent versions, MariaDB is used instead of MySQL. The setup of MariaDB is out of the scope of this tutorial, 
But after installing XAMPP, you can set up a user in MariaDB for Flowwise. In our case, we set up the user underscore Flowwise. The next step is to clone Flowwise. Get the address from the repository on GitHub and clone it to the folder flowwise-db-mysql. We change to the new folder and from within the folder, we start Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, we navigate to Packages, Server, and copy and paste .env.example and rename it to .env. Here, we define another port like 3001 and enter our MySQL or MariaDB configuration. Use the user underscore flowwise for database user and flowwise for database name. If you check the database migration for MySQL, we see that UTF-8 MB4 900 AICI is used as collation. This collation exists in MySQL, but it doesn't exist in MariaDB. So we must adjust it later. But first we need to install the packages. We go to the root of our project and type yarn install. This takes some time. When all of the packages are installed, the prompt comes back and we can clear the screen. Before we use yarn build, we need to set up our database. Otherwise we get some errors when we start flowwise. So we open Heidi SQL again, and this time we create a new session to our MariaDB database. We save and open the connection. We create a database and give it the name Flowwise, just like our configuration. If you use MySQL, you can choose the collation UTF-8 MB4 900 CIAI as used in the migration script. But if you use MariaDB, this collation does not exist. And we need to choose UTF-8 MB4 Unicode 520CI instead and create the database. Back in Visual Studio Code, we search for UTF-8 MB4 900 CIAI and see it is used four times in one file. We open the file and use Ctrl D to select all four occurrences and change all of them together to the new collation we used in MariaDB and save. Now you can use yarn build and wait till the build process is finished. After the build is finished and the prompt comes back, you can clear the screen and type yarn start. Please notice that this instance of Flowwise listens to port 3001 and uses MariaDB as database instead of the default SQLite. When you navigate to localhost port 3001, you see the Flowwise UI with no chat flows. Whereas if you open localhost 3000, you see the other instance of Flowwise with four chat flows. In our new Flowwise installation, we go ahead and create a simple conversation chain. After adjusting the components on the canvas, we enter our OpenAI API key in the chat OpenAI and reduce the temperature to 0.2 to be more deterministic. When we are done with the configuration, we save the chat flow and give it a name like flowwise-db-mysql. Now we can test our chat flow and ask, what is a collation in MySQL? And get back some information from ChatGPT about collation and why and how we use them. Next, we ask the differences between the UTF-8 MB4 900 CIAI and UTF-8 MB4 Unicode 520 CI. And again, ChatGPT patiently explains us the differences and when and how to use them. Now that we have a chat flow and some messages on the new Flowwise installation on port 3001, it's time to check the databases and compare the tables. 
We can first open our session to the SQLite database and then add the session to our Maria database in the same window so that we can easily compare them together. In the MariaDB database, we have only one chat flow, whereas in the SQLite database, we have four chat flows. There are a lot of messages in SQLite database, and in the MariaDB database, we only see four messages about collections. To wrap it up, Flowwise stores the data used in the web UI in a database. It can store this data in different kinds of databases using type ORM. The default database is SQLite, located in the root of the current user in a folder called .flowwise. You can simultaneously run multiple Flowwise instances with different databases. You can create views, query, filter, and export Flowwise messages without using any tokens. This will help you debug and monitor your chat flows for free. Good luck.